if you have to pass HIV through saliva, you have to pass five liters of saliva. I am Salisu Ahmed. I've been able to be living with this virus for 31 years. How did you contract this virus? The first experiment of going outside my matrimonial home, that was how it happened. It has been proven that about 85 to 90 percent of people living with HIV contracted this thing through sexual intercourse. But I think we don't talk a lot about the psychological aspect. I was denied the use of the bedroom in the compound. I was not allowed to access the toilet. You had told your, your wife and she left the house with the kids. Pack everything, including the children at home, and they left me. A lot of people think, oh, if you kiss somebody that has this virus, you can get it. Is this possible? Yes. If he or she has a sore in the mouth, this can be transmitted through this source. Were you able to remarry? Yes, I was able to get another partner 12 years after. Welcome guys to the second episode of Doing's Corner. On today's episode, we're actually going to be discussing something very sensitive. I would ask that we maintain respect and sensitivity as this is a very sensitive topic, like I said. The topic for today is living with HIV in Nigeria. We have a guest with us in the studio who has been living with this virus for a long time and is here to educate us about the virus and how to live a meaningful and fulfilled life even with the virus. So I'll leave him to introduce himself. Good evening, sir. Thank evening, you so much for coming. Please tell us a bit about yourself. I am Salisu Ahmed. Okay, sir. And uh, as of today, I've been able to be living with this virus for 31 years today. No. Oh. Yes, that's approximately since 1993. Oh, wow. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. I need to ask, um, first of all, can we ask how old you are, please? I'm 63. Oh, wow. The 1st of June this year, I was 63. Okay, so I think the first question that comes to mind is, how did you contract this virus? Well, it's a long story, but let me summarize everything. It was a kind of a maladjusted home kind of issue that I had then. There was no bliss in the home. So the first experiment of going outside my matrimonial home, that was how it happened. I did not contact my own or contract it through lumps of uh, a biosamovita, <laughs> like some other people will claim. This is majorly contracted through sexual intercourse, you understand. I mm. think scientifically it has, proven, it has been proven that about 85 to 90 percent of people living with HIV contracted this thing through uh, sexual intercourse. Mm. Okay, at the time, first of all, I need to even know. What was your initial reaction when you found out that, oh, I'm HIV positive? The initial, was initial reaction, reaction was that of every human being that, oh, I have known the day I will die. Hmm. I know I will die soon. So to make matters even worse, I went to a hospital where I was told by one of the health workers then that, ah, Ogbeni, you've come to the end of the road. People who have this infection live for six months before they die. The highest you can live now is maybe 12 months, and you'll be normal. Wow. Uh, because I had been cancelled and informed that the story wasn't what people were saying, that if I can lay my hands on the antiretroviral drugs, I'll be able to live my normal productive life. Hmm. Yes. Okay, so you mentioned that you contracted this through sexual intercourse. Um, yes. You had an affair while you were married. Yes. And you contracted this. Yeah. So 
First of all, I think I have two questions from that. Did you go back to this person that you had slept with at the time to say, see, I have this virus, I think I got it from you. Did you ever have the conversation with that person? Yes. I went back for restitution. I went back to make amends, you understand? I'm sorry that my diction is not too good. No, it's okay. <laughs> Don't worry should, about that. Please, uh, forgive me for that. I'm not well schooled. So forgive me for my diction. So I went back to my partner and told her that this is the situation I found myself. Mm -hmm. She said, how come? I said, well, this thing happened when we had quarrel at home. And since I had been trying to calm you down and, uh, you know, Pacify ask you. for your pacify, you beg for your forgiveness, and you refused. I was forced to go out. Now it has happened. So the next thing is for her to just move away from the home, pack everything, including the children at home. Mm. And they left me. Oh, wow. Because then she was ill-informed as well that <sighs> this person is going to die. And living with him is dangerous because he will infect you, infect the children, and you all die. So I didn't blame the poor woman. Even though now she is late, Aww. she died 16 years after leaving me, not infected already, because she had gone for her uh, uh, test several times and uh, has not been reactive to HIV antibodies. Mm. As at the time, she left me. So 16 years after she departed, she... she she was called to the other side. May her soul rest in peace. Amen. In Jesus' name. Um, something that came to mind while you were speaking was um, something that came to mind while you were while you were speaking was you mentioned that you know when you found out that you had it, you went back and you spoke to your partner about it, and you know a lot of people talk about the medical side of or contracting this virus and how it affects your health and everything. But I think we don't talk a lot enough about the psychological aspect of it. Because I know that it's one thing to be sick and it's another thing to like be able to like digest it mentally that okay, this thing is wrong with me. Can you tell us some of the challenges you faced after realizing that oh I have this thing? Some of the medical challenges and psychological challenges that you faced? Uh, the highest challenge as at then, or let me say challenges as at then, were the, you know, accessibility to the medication, because then it was on the high side. Only the rich could afford the medication as at then. I hope you get what I'm saying. Yes, Only the rich could afford it then. But... You see, it is one thing for you to have this infection. It's another thing for you to be determined that, yes, you want to actually live. Yes, if you are determined you want to live, you have to make some sacrifices. You understand? Life is all about give and take. You have to drop some things like attitudes, lifestyles, you understand. There are some things you have to give way to for you to live a new life and remain alive. Mm. Can you please um, elaborate a little bit on some uh, of the lifestyle the, 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 Okay. The first issue then, the highest challenge then was the unaccessibility to ART, which is antiretroviral therapy, and the second challenge is this, self-stigmatization. Mm. If you self-stigmatize yourself, then your neighbors, your friends, your relations, everybody will start running away from you because psychologically you've created that room for them to see you 
as somebody who is not normal. Right. Yeah. So psychologically, but, if you if you don't give room to self stigma, when people are sitting down, you go and isolate yourself somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You understand. If you don't want to be part of the community, then you've isolated yourself already. And you are giving room for others to also run away from you. I mean, you've spoken about the self-stigmatization. I want to touch a bit on the society, societal stigmatization. Because, you know, upon hearing that you are positive, right? Did you tell other people about this? Or was it something that you kept as a secret? Like, ah, I must not tell anybody. I don't want people to run away from me. Were you depressed? Were you? I, I cannot even imagine how you'd have handled it. For me, Silisu, I was bold enough because I have been told the fact then, even though it's, it wasn't the real fact. What I was being told, I was being uh, misinformed. I was being given half of the truth that I would soon die. You understand? But I did not take that because I met a health worker. I met a doctor that actually gave me the hope that I could still live a productive and healthy life. Yes. Right. So, okay. so then, when the issue of uh, stigma came up, I decided to face it head on. And I was able to at least disclose to some people that are closer to me. So despite all I faced, I never bothered. I was denied the use of uh, the uh, bedroom in the compound. I was not allowed to access the toilet. So I have to go outside in public to take my bath. So it was something like a trauma. How can I be living as if I'm still in the Stone Age? Mm. But I, I, I thank God I was able to cruise the storm. Mm. Yeah. I want to talk a bit, because you mentioned, um, you know, they didn't allow you to use the restroom in the compound. There are a lot of people that are very misinformed about this virus. A lot of people think, Oh, if somebody has HIV, you can't even hug them. You can get it, you know, by hugging them or by sharing cutlery with them or by eating from the same plate with them. You know, can you tell us the ways to contract this virus? Yes, there are four ways only to contract this infection. Because some people misinform the public. You understand? But we need to correct this impression over and over and over and over again you can only contract HIV through unprotected sexual intercourse with an infected partner. You can contract this infection through sharing of infected, unsterilized, sharp objects. This infection can be contracted also through transfusion of infected, unscreened, blood transfusion. You understand? Mm -hmm. And the fourth route is through an infected mother to her unborn child. While the child is still in the womb, as at the time of delivery or after delivery when breastfeeding the child, these are the only four, four routes. You cannot infect someone because you had a handshake or because you share same spoon or because you, you, you share same uh, chair or, or, or bedroom. You cannot contract HIV even through insect bites like mosquitoes, bed bugs, and all that. There's this misconception. People think that you can contract HIV through saliva. A lot of people think, oh, if you kiss somebody that has this virus, you can get it. Is this possible? Yes, 
please, this is a very technical issue, but I will give you my my own uh, little knowledge about it. I have somebody I can call now who is my prof in this line. You understand? So that he can elaborate more. But from the little things I learned from the issue of contracting HIV through saliva, one, it's been proven that an infected partner, if he or she has a sore in the mouth, hmm, and the other partner too had another saw in his or her mouth. You understand? This can be transmitted through this source. That is one. Two, it is also believed that if you have to pass HIV through saliva, then you must be able to transfer five whole liters of spit. Hmm. Is it possible? Absolutely not. Eh? No. You have to pass five liters of saliva to your partner. So I think you that is passing the saliva, make your judgment. <laughs> eh? Right. I think you will be dry, if I'm not mistaken. Eh? Okay, um, I would like to know, upon contracting this virus, what are the earliest symptoms that somebody would face at the beginning? Because I know that there's a difference between HIV and AIDS. Yes. Right, so we're going to get to that. But what's, still speaking about HIV, what are the earliest symptoms that people would see? Yeah. First, you look out for persistent fever, progressive weight loss of more than 40 to 60 kg, you understand. Then you look out for loss of appetite, uncontrollable cough that comes, go, and then Come return. Back. Return. You understand. You treat cough, and it now relapses. These are some of the symptoms. We still have diarrhea mm. and other things. You understand. Skin rash, and so on and so forth. I think there's also one thing that a lot of people are confused about. If somebody was to sleep with an infected person or use a sharp object that you know has been infected, what is the incubation period in terms of like testing? You know, if I were to sleep with an infected person now and I go and get tested tomorrow, I probably would test negative, right? I yes, yes, so yes. So I would like you to please educate us a bit on, you know, how long you would need to wait before getting this test done to be able to get an yes, accurate Yes, this result. is also another technical question. And I will also answer it technically. One, if you are sleeping with an infected person and you don't know this person is infected, and perhaps your partner too is not aware that he or she is also infected, you understand. So one thing also plays out your level of immunity. If your level of immunity is high, it could take for as long a period as close to six weeks. For you to test positive. For you to test positive. Oh. Are there people, because yeah. I've heard something before that for people that have really like high immune system, or like strong immune system, it's possible for them to sleep with somebody that is infected and they don't catch it. But another person can sleep with someone who is infected and they contract it. Is that, is that a myth or is it true? It all depends. If somebody with high immunity sleeps with an infected partner, that does not mean that uh, the man with uh, high immunity cannot contract the infection. He can. 
what if there is a cut on the penis of the man? Mm. Hmm? The virus has seen an entry point to enter Same into time. the man. It will get into the man's uh, bloodstream and begin to fight the immune system too because HIV doesn't fight anything except the immune system. It kills the immune system before it now destroys you. Okay, so I want us to move to the difference between HIV and AIDS. Okay. At what point does it become AIDS? Yes, HIV is the human immunodeficiency virus. It is the sign of antibodies eh? being present with the antigen. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. So the antibodies is a sign that a stranger has entered. You understand? A stranger has entered into the arena. So a lot of things will start happening. Because the virus knows that with the high immune system, it is in trouble. The immune system will be fighting it out. But the only thing the virus could do is to kill the immune system so that it could have an upper hand to destroy other organs of the body. Yes. So when there is no treatment, you understand, and the virus becomes more powerful, what we call high viremia, the virus now begins to destroy the immune system the more. By the time the immune system becomes powerless, that is a sign of what we call AIDS. Uh, no, it's not yet AIDS. It's getting to AIDS defining stage. Okay. So, if the immune system now maybe from 1,500 now dropped dropped to less than 200, that is where trouble starts. Then you begin to see the syndromic side of AIDS. Mm. The patient now is presenting with more than five different kinds of diseases. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Inability to swallow is part of it. You understand? Loss of weight. Mm. Eh? And Severe fever and other things will come up. So many things. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go on a quick break. We're still chatting to Mr. Sally Sue, but we're coming back really soon. Welcome back, guys. And we're still seated with Mr. Sally Sue talking about living with HIV in Nigeria. So, sir, before we went on the break, there was a question that came to mind. A lot of people are very confused about, you know, how long should they wait after they've had sex to get tested in order to be able to get the accurate results? And also, do they have to do this testing multiple times or is it is one time enough? Thank you for that question. Immediately, you had the experience. Please the test should be conducted for some reasons, safety reasons even, for both parties. Because if somebody is infected, the person might not know immediately. So if the person is not reactive to antibodies after the first test, the person will be asked to come back in six weeks' time to repeat the test. Okay. 
then after the first six weeks, if the person still comes with no non-reactive to antibodies, the person will be asked to come back in three months' time. Then after that, repetition will come six months afterwards. Okay. Then it becomes a routine. Because it is even safer when people go out to have their HIV test. It's the most important thing. Okay. I want to touch back on how this virus affects relationships. So you had mentioned earlier that when you contracted yours, you had told your, your wife and she left the house with the kids. Did, were you able to remarry? And did it affect, you know, talking to supposed partners? or? Yes, I, I was able to get another partner. That's 12 years after. Hmm. 12 years? Yes, 12 years after. I was able to get another partner. And this is how it goes. Because if you want to put an end truly to HIV and AIDS worldwide, you have to confine the movement of this virus to a particular uh, place so that it will not go beyond. Mm. So if you leave the confines of HIV-infected people, and you go and get an innocent partner outside, you are still destroying the society. You are transmitting the infection here and there. So you are destroying the society. But if you want to get a partner, you look for somebody who is also assessing treatment, who is also assessing treatment, because this virus has destroyed several homes, it had become an emotional thing worldwide, not only in Nigeria, because many homes have been broken. A lot of things happened. Many people lost their means of livelihood mm. because of this infection. Yes. I was formerly a teacher. So I was asked honorably to stop coming to the school. Really? The, yes. I had to because the proprietor of my school said parents are complaining that I'm not looking well. So he will not want his customers to withdraw their words away from the school because of my recent outlook. You understand? So I honorably left the job too. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. Were you able to get another job or was it difficult to get of another course. job? Yeah, it was somehow difficult. It wasn't as much difficult, but I've been able to fix myself up as a counselor. Mm. Yes, as a counselor. So I have something Hello. doing Hello. as at now. Okay, so I want to talk about this. There are a lot of I've heard this before that it's possible for a woman to be pregnant and you know she has the virus, but I guess there's some sort of like maybe technology, whatever, I don't know, that can help that that child will come out negative. Yes. Please can you explain a bit on that? Uh, in most cases, you see, the national algorithm in Nigeria today had made it mandatory for all pregnant women from the first trimester, once they start their antenata, they go through the HIV test because part of the fight against the virus is to ensure that no baby is infected through the mother. Mm. Yes, so pregnant women are being tested. Immediately they are detected, they are placed on medication. And once they start, they, once they are placed on medication, the virus becomes timid mm. and less powerful. So possibility of 
that baby being infected becomes even more lower. Yeah. Okay. Speaking about medication, can you please tell us the drugs that are available to you know people with people living with this virus? And also, how cost-effective is it? is it? Is this something that can be, you know, that is affordable to almost anybody or is it expensive? Um, for now, the drug supply to this country is being spearheaded by some implementing partners from overseas with the support of the Nigerian government at the moment. So there are lots of drugs, you know, depending on what you are presented with. Some people can come with stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four of the infection, according to WHO staging. So they are all placed on Different treatment. Okay. Somebody that is presented with HIV infection, you understand, without TB after the screening, will be given his antiretroviral drugs. The person that is presented with HIV and TB will have to be treated for TB and HIV at the same time. Mm. So it's not the same medication for everybody. It's depending on what It depends level. on what you come with. Okay. okay. Somebody who has impaired renal infection have his or her own kind of medication as well. So they are not being placed on the same regimen. Um, speaking about medication still, are there particular um, hospitals in Lagos? where people can, or maybe in Nigeria, actually, where people can, you know, get access to these medications? Uh, all, or is it just any hospital? All government hospitals in the 774 local governments in Nigeria have treatment centers. Mm. So anywhere you go to, in any local government in Nigeria, you are likely going to access treatment there. Mm. Yes. Are these drugs being sold or are they given to the patients for free? As at this moment, the drugs are free. So it's not for sale for now. Okay. But we don't know of the future. Okay. You know, formerly it was being sold before God's intervention when the supply now became free. You understand? And we don't know because anything can happen. But we pray we will not wake up one day and they say patients should start paying. Mm. Because even now that it is free, mm -hmm. people are still not ready to show up and collect these drugs for free. Mm. So you can just imagine when you now say, okay, people come should start pay pay, paying. Nobody will want to come out again. People will now have the opportunity to start spreading the virus all over again. We're going to go on a short break and we're going to be back in a minute. We apologize for the sudden break in transmission. We're still on the topic, living with HIV in Nigeria. Still speaking about medication, sir. How long does a person need to use these drugs for, for them to have a low enough viral load to be able to have sex with partners without worrying about transmitting it? Uh, for the efficacy of the medication, from day one, the medication is expected to be taken for as long as that person is alive. It's a thing you are expected to take every blessed day of your life, every day, same time, every day, you understand. So there's no limitation as to when the person will stop. It's a continuous thing. Mm, not stopping, but like, do they have to take it for a period of time before the viral, or, they, or they'll keep taking it and checking the viral load, then when it's low exactly. enough, Exactly. You have to take these drugs with adherence. 
you understand. You have to take it with adherence to the medication because it's not just about you waking up to say you are taking it today, 7 a.m. Tomorrow you are taking it seven, uh, uh, 8 a.m. No. You must be specific with your timing. Yes, if you have chosen 7 a.m., then every day is supposed to be 7 a.m. So after every six months, viral load tests will now be conducted to see how well this patient is fearing. If the viral load is less than 50, that's the latest uh, expectation of all uh, patients now. The viral load should be low. Should be below fifty. If it's below fifty, <clears throat> definitely, excuse me, you cannot transmit the infection to another person. Okay. So when the viral load, this is our own. Uh, that's Nigeria's uh, uh, Center for Disease Control's uh, agitation for now. But WHO says if someone's viral load is below 200, eh? in some areas they say when it's below 1,000, mm. then tr transmission is not possible. It's possible, but it's not as high as when it is above 1,000. So you do everything possible to be adherent to this medication. Take it as at when due, every day. You understand? So it makes the drugs to work very well. It could be taken on empty stomach. It could be taken before food. It could be taken after food as well. So. Okay. There's this thing that people say that homosexual men are more susceptible to this virus? First of all, is it true? And if yes, why? Okay, I think we should look at it from, <coughs> excuse me, from yes. this angle of knowing the right of others and respecting them. You understand? Whether it is men, that have sex with men that are more susceptible to this infection or not, I am not in the best position to, to, answer that. to answer that. All I know is that if your lifestyle is not as clean as it is supposed to be, if you are hetero, eh? Mm -hmm. Sexual. If you are Homosexual. homo, if you are whatever, if your lifestyle is not as clean as it is supposed to be, you are going to be exposed to the risk of this infection. I guess this brings us to our final and concluding question. There are a lot of people watching that maybe already know that they have this virus. And, you know, they don't know what to do. They're so confused. A lot of people are depressed. A lot of people are sad, you know. Some people want to commit suicide. First of all, is there any support group in Nigeria that, you know, helps people to just, you know, meet like-minded people and, you know, get support? And what yes, advice yes. would you give to them? Yes. We have a network of people living with HIV and AIDS in Nigeria. The head office is in Abuja. We have the Lagos branch here in Lagos. Eh? The, the office in Lagos is somewhere around Costain at 8 Desalu Street here in Lagos. So we have support groups even in different hospitals, about 96 centers in Lagos State where patients assess their treatment and they gather they pick a date that is convenient for them to gather and share common interest together. Yes. 
And then what advice would you give to somebody that maybe doesn't want to join the support group, but they just found out and they're trying to figure out how to live life with this? Um, the, the only thing is, you know, you can just uh, take a horse to the stream, but you can't force it to drink water. Yes, when you are registered in a center and you are assessing treatment there, I think the best thing is to join other people, even though we know that people have their rights of association. If you, if you are part of it, you definitely learn one or two things. And you can as well impact on another person's life. Right. I hope you get me. You can as well impact on, on another person's life. If you don't want anybody to impact, impact on your own life. life, you can be a way of uh, you know, making somebody happy by telling the person this is your own experience and you've been able to overcome it. The person will also emulate you and also become an overcomer. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much, Zah. Thank you so much. I feel like we've learned so much from this episode. Thank you Thank for Thank you for being me. open. Yeah. Thank you for educating people. This is a very fulfilling course. Um, and to those of us that are watching that may have this virus and, you know, you're confused, you don't know what to do, and, you know, you almost think that this is a death sentence, I'm happy that you know now that HIV is not a death sentence. There are people living very long and fulfilling lives with this virus. All you have to do is, you know, once you've confirmed your status, look for any, you know, hospital, government hospital around you where you can get your medication, monitor your viral load. You can live a very long, very fulfilling life with this virus. It's not the end of the world. I hope that we're respectful and we try not to stigmatize people living with this. We understand that they're also human beings and they have the right to be respected just like every other person. So we've come to the end of this episode and I'll see you guys next week, same time on this channel. Goodbye. <laughs>